Hello, everybody. So I took a few weeks off, and I am sick as hell. Despite that, let's go ahead and create our monster system. When we are creating monsters, it's best to create a kind of monstrous manual. Uh, if you've ever done RPG Maker, for example, you know that there's a big database of monsters that you pull from. There are a couple of reasons for that. The biggest one is portability. Um, you can import and export monsters really, really easily if you have this scriptable object shared format, rather than if you're having to rely on uh, the much more complex and interconnected uh, set of things that a uh, um, that a mono behavior would require, a mono behavior prefab would require. Another reason is because it's less prone to editor mistakes and less prone to versioning problems. So if you're creating a real small game, you can go ahead and do this however you want. But if you're creating a larger game or if you're planning to download additional monsters, you really need your monsters to be in a kind of scriptable object manual of monsters. So that's what I've started to create here. And we're going to go ahead and finish that up today, or get to the part where it's actually possible today. So here in the scriptable, scriptable objects, I've created a monster template class. It's really simple. It's just a scriptable object with a multi-line description, an HP, and some loot tables. Um, the HP is kind of monster's max HP. You wouldn't decrease this when you hit a monster because it would decrease all of the monster's HPs across the board, which would not be bright. So this is the templates, monster templates HP, which I guess you could call max HP or whatever you'd like. We're going to be refining this a lot later on. Um, and we're going to be creating an editor which looks really nice for it, but for now this will do. We just need this monster template. How do we create individual monsters or individual monster definitions off of our monster template? Well, this is a scriptable object and we have another scriptable object here in I inventory item template and we had the same problem. We had to create this inventory item creator script to create it and the way that works is it adds a menu item down here which allows us to create inventory items. And at the time I said, that really shouldn't be necessary. There should just be a button right here that creates an inventory item by you know clicking it to create an instance. Since then, I found a script that does that. So today we're going to go ahead and create that script right here. I'll provide some links. And it's a much more powerful script. You should just put it in every project you ever create. And let's get to it. It needs to be in the editor directory we will call this the script inspector. We're going to go over this line by line. You can just cut and paste the whole thing if you don't want to understand how it works. So it needs to be of type editor, but you notice the type editor editor doesn't exist. That's because we need to add the namespace properly. And we need to tell it what kind of thing it is editing. It is a custom editor for the type for the type of monoscript. And sorry, again, I'm pretty sick, so I'm going to have some pretty clumsy fingers here. And this is the function we'll be overwriting. Now, monoscript is a big umbrella. It includes a lot of things. Uh, for starters, it includes monobehavior and a scriptable object. So monoscript and monobehavior are not the same thing, but monobehaviors are, as far as I understand it, a type of monoscript. Um, this is a little bit of deep magic here in terms of uh, uh, accessing parts of the um, uh, of the GUI and the Unity system, which aren't normally accessed, uh, especially not in these kinds of basic tutorials. So um, when you're sick like I am and you're accessing something deep like this, you may make a misstatement. I don't think I've made any yet, but keep your ears open. I'm sure I'll screw something up along the way and then you can all laugh at me. Anyway, we need to go ahead and get this all sorted. So monoscript, monoscript equals target as monoscript. You can tell someone else programmed this because I would have done monoscript here, but that's not important. System dot type type equals monoscript dot get class. Now this is going to be important because we're going to be using this type a lot. Now, we want to go ahead and see whether or not we should actually do our Create Instance button. So when do we want to create an instance? Well, first off, let's make sure that the type actually exists. If the type exists, we want to make sure that the type is So there we are. Uh, if the type is a scriptable object, we want to be able to create an instance of the scriptable object. In the uh, in the script that he created, we also use the not 
type uh, that is subclass of type of unity editor dot editor I'm not entirely sure uh, why that's necessary but I have a sneaking suspicion that the editor class may also be a scriptable object I mean a, a monoscript and you might end up accidentally causing a recursive loop or something similar um, I'm not 100% sure I'm not gonna test it out it's uh, it certainly seems to work fine if we leave it in so if all of that's true then we want the button that allows us to create a scriptable object uh, instance So this is a pretty typical treat, uh, pretty typical trick. What you do is you create a button at the same time questioning whether or not it is true. Because this create button replies false if it isn't clicked and true if it is clicked. So this button will always be created, but if we click on it, this statement in here will get run. Very typical way to do inspector buttons. So here we're creating a new scriptable object of the correct type. Remember, we need to use this type a lot. We use it here, we use it up here. So uh, that creates a scriptable object that's the right subtype. In this case, it would be a monster template or an inventory item template. We also need a path. So the one he recommends is assets uh, dot, uh, plus type dot name plus dot asset. I don't recommend that path. That path that path will put it in your basic assets directory, which is, well, not the best place to put it, really. Uh, so where do we want to put it? Well, let's go ahead and take a look at our inventory item creator script. You can see how we created a uh, project window util .create asset. Now there's a lot of ways to do that, and, uh, and one of the ways we can one of the ways we can do it is we can use this project window util instead of what we've got, but I'm not entirely sure we want to do that. What might be a better way to do it is to just assume the, the, that the directory is always going to be what we want it to be. So there's a lot of ways to do this, and if you're feeling your oats, you can come up with any kind of solution. What we're going to do for now is we're going to put it in the scriptable objects subdirectory because we know that that's where we're going to want it to go. Then we're going to be using the asset database method. Um, this method is the alternative to the utils method I showed you over here. This u project window util create asset is a very powerful tool and uh, it would work fine in this situation, but we're going to be using the asset database method in this case, which works almost the same way but is a little bit less flexible. We're also going to be using an unusual We're going to be using an unusual technique using the GUI editor utility ping object functionality, which I guess replaces asset database dot save assets, which is what was normally used at this time. I'm not sure what the advantage of ping object is over save assets, but it's not a significant issue, so that'll be fine. Now we're done. That's created the asset. We just need to go on and finish up the actual inspector. So we want to have a GUI layout dot space. 10 or whatever and that will just put a little bit of a gap between the button and what comes next and what comes next is GUI layout dot label monoscript dot text now this is an exact duplicate of what the default script inspector does but we're not calling the default script inspector in this case we're just listing it off the script text in the same way as it does I'm not sure why he chose to do this rather than calling the base inspector view but um, it's fine either way. So there it is. That is the whole class. Now, if we go over here and we looked, you can see that this still looks fine. But this is a mono bay. I'm sorry. This is an editor window. So what we want to do is go down here into our monster template. Hey, look at that! Nice big create instance button. And there's our monster template. See? Oh, that's what ping does. Ping makes it explode in the window, so you can really see it. That's fine. We can call this slime, and we can change it. Uh, and it doesn't have a name, you notice? So we need to go in and give our monster template a name. Now 
No, it does have a name. I just can't change it for some reason. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm just being stupid. The name is actually right here. I am sick. This is the name. There we go. And we can go ahead and add in the loot drop stuff if we'd like, whatever we would like. Uh, it's pretty straightforward to do anything at this point, but there is a lot of stuff left to do in terms of, uh, uh, in terms of creating a better monster editor and all of that jazz. For now, uh, this will be plenty for today, and uh, it'll probably be a couple days before the next one because I probably want to get well first. <laughs>